Good afternoon, everybody. My yeah. name's... Good afternoon. Are you all having a good time so far at the conference? Yeah? Good stuff. Well, my name's Haroon Rashid, and I'm from a company called Chemia Consulting, and uh, we're an innovation agency in Bradford. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking to you about how I managed to generate £150,000 worth of leads with social media. Um, I did that January to March this year, and I did it for free. Outside of that time frame, of course, I've generated a lot more leads and sales than that, but I think that just sounds pretty cool, so we'll go with that for now. Um, so what you're going to get out of this session is just a bit about my story of how I managed to do that, how I managed to become an internationally featured marketeer, some key lessons that I've learned along the way and that you can implement yourself, and then at the end I'll give you some quick fire social media tips for Facebook, Twitter, and if you've got any questions, I'll be happy to answer those as well. Uh, we could do things about LinkedIn and Google Plus and all that good stuff. So who am I and why should you listen to me? So as I say, I've managed to generate all those leads and um, that's my weekly show on Google Plus called Haroon's Hangout. Um, and January this year, it got internationally featured on Canadian radio. Um, CBC happens to be Canada's version of the BBC, which I didn't know at the time, but <clears throat> I'll go into that in a bit more detail as we go on. Um, on the show, I've been so privileged to be able to interview some of America's leading uh, marketing experts. That is a guy called John Hayden. He's the author of Facebook Marketing for Dummies, and he's also uh, a contributor to some of the biggest social media blogs in the world. Now, the problem that I always have is, is that there's so many people who are stood in my position and who are telling you social media tips and stories. How many of you have been to a social media seminar before? Yeah? Majority of people. Okay. So you're getting conflicting information. You don't know who to listen to and it's just all a bit of a big mess. So at Chemia, we actually think there's two types of social media gurus or experts. The first one is this type that we've affectionately called a social media hippie. Don't get upset. It's just an affectionate term. And the social media hippie is very much geared towards the social side of the whole thing. They'll say things like, it's all about building relationships. They'll say stuff like, it's all about talking to people. And they'll say other stuff like, you shouldn't sell. I don't know how many of you might have heard of stuff like that before, okay? Now, <clears throat> are you saying, Haroon, that you shouldn't do that kind of stuff? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, it's not that it's incorrect, it's just that it's incomplete. Yes, you should engage with people. Yes, you should build relationships with people. And you shouldn't overtly sell on social media. There's a way to sell without selling. But the problem is, is that we're all in business. We've all got our own businesses. We all work for businesses. Now, I've never paid a bill with a relationship. I don't know about you, but I don't ever ring up my mortgage company and say, hey, we had a chat on Twitter that time. They don't, it doesn't work like that, okay? If you make it all about building relationships, you'll make a hell of a lot of friends, but you won't make any money. If you make it all about engagement, you'll have a lot of great conversations, but you won't make any money. If you don't sell, guess what? You won't make any money. So what's the problem? There's something wrong here, isn't there? So as I say, you're in business. Let's make it really, really simple. You're in business to make a profit. Your profit is not made out of engagement. Your profit is not made out of relationships. It's made out of money. Would you all agree with that? You're looking at me like I've said something weird. <laughs> okay. So what's the solution? We say that you need to be business-minded. Okay. Everything you do with social media has to have a business or a financial or a commercial focus. If it doesn't make any money, then you are quote-unquote frigging about on Facebook. You probably heard that term. Okay, so I did a talk at Leeds University a few years ago and it was a digital marketing talk and I asked the audience, what are some of your favorite websites and keep it clean? And apart from, you know, social media, they gave me the usual BBC News, Sky Sports News, IMDB, someone said Perez Hilton, um, and I listed them all down and I said, how many times a week do you guys go on these sites? And they're like, yeah, pretty much every day. So I said, okay, how many times a day might you go on these sites? One guy at the front said, between 10 and 15 times a day. Between 10 and 15 times a day on his favorite site. Now, I, I knew it was gonna be high, but I didn't think it was gonna be that high. So I was like, dude, wh why? <laughs> and he said, because I've got it on my phone and I keep checking the apps. 
And then it became like a confessional. Everyone else's hands started going up and they're going, uh, yeah, actually, that, that sounds about right for me as well. And I said, okay, well, you guys are spending a long time online. Why? Because it's interesting. I'm like, yeah, I know it's interesting. What makes it interesting? And then one guy said, because they've got content. And I was like, exactly. They've got content which is fresh, relevant, and it's updated on a continual basis. Think about your favorite website just for a moment. Would you look at your favorite website today, go away, come back tomorrow just to look at the same thing again? No, you wouldn't, that's ludicrous, that's insane. But as businesses, that's what we're doing to our customers. And then we're wondering why we're not generating any traffic. We're wondering why we're not getting any social media followers. We're wondering why we're not generating any leads and sales. It's because you're not giving them anything to look at. So what we're saying here is, is that people are after content, and this is the golden rule now, people are after content that solves a problem or a need. And it's as simple as that. As long as you have content, and I mean videos, blog posts, podcasts, eBooks, white papers, graphics, infographics, all that good stuff, and you're solving those problems and needs for your customers, they'll keep coming back. You'll build up that trust, and guess what? They'll buy from you. It's as simple as that. Does that make sense so far, guys? Okay. Now, doing that will require you <laughs> to have a bit of a system in place, have some dis discipline in place and all that, because everyone says to me, well, I haven't got time for that, Haru. I haven't got time to be blogging. Blog once a month? No, no, no. I can't do that. I, and at Kemia, we used to do one blog a week. We've now got to the place where we're doing about eight to 10 pieces a week. We've got multiple posts going out every single day. We've launched our own online TV network. So we're, we've got clients as well. We're a small team of about five people. But how is it that we're able to do all this and work it into our system? And the point is, is that it's not that we don't have time, it's that we've placed enough importance on it to make time for it. That makes sense. So let me tell you a little story then. I got an email from uh, a guy, a business correspondent from CBC. And I, like I said, I didn't know who CBC was. And it was a very unprofessionally worded email, if I'm honest. He just went, hey, Haroon, I'm doing a piece for uh, CBC Radio on LinkedIn marketing. I saw one of your YouTube videos on Google. Do you mind if we feature you? Cheers, Phil. <laughs> so, I didn't know if it was spam or not, so I, um, you know, I forwarded it on to my boss, and I'll never forget what he said. He said, pursue it, you never know where it might take you. And little did I know it, it meant that my show would be featured 20 times in one day, and it was you know, sent out across, all across Canada and across the world, and it was such a great thing for me. But this is what happened. The business correspondent told me that he didn't know anything about LinkedIn. He had a problem, or he had a need, right? So what did he do? He Googled how to use LinkedIn for business or LinkedIn strategy. And he saw something like this. And who's that guy? That's me, a few pounds heavier, <laughs> but that's me. Now, if you look at the top, there's Forbes.com. You've all heard of Forbes.com, right? Third one down is Social Media Examiner. They're one of the biggest social media companies in the world who are also in talks with us about coming on the show, by the way, so that's good. But why is it that a lad from Bradford got featured on a Canadian radio station. That's hilarious when you think about it. They didn't ask Forbes. They didn't ask Social Media Examiner. They asked me. And it's because I had content that solved a problem or a need. By the way, everybody knows that Google is the number one search engine in the world, right? Sure, okay. <laughs> Does anybody know what the second one is? Anybody want to give us a guess? Yeah. YouTube, right. YouTube's the second largest search engine in the world, okay? I remember my mother-in-law came around to visit and when she was gonna leave, her car wouldn't start. What did I do? I never jump-started a car before, so I went on YouTube, because I had to get her the hell out of there. So, <laughs> you know, I had to look at how to jump-start the car, found a video, she was off, okay? So YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. So that's how that story came about. Now let's talk a bit about you guys and your processes, okay? Like I said, 
Something for the ladies, I suppose. <laughs> okay, that guy there, uh, he's a guy called Nick Auger. Did he always look like that? It's not a trick question. Did he always look like that? No, of course he didn't. He didn't come out of the womb like that. You understand, right? He either would have started a bit skinny, or he might have been a bit heavier, but he started from somewhere. Now, can you imagine his first day at the gym? He would have got a personal trainer. The personal trainer said, you need to do this, this, and this. Okay? Now, he would have got on the floor, done his ab crunches, and he'd have probably done about 30, 40, 50. Now, every time he did a crunch, he might have had perfect form every crunch. He might have felt the burn on every single crunch, okay? Got a question for you. When he got up after his first set of uh, ab crunches, did he have a six pack? No, he didn't, did he? But he did everything right. What, what's wrong with the advice you've just given me? No, 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 no. It's because things of value take time. Nick Auger will have done this when he felt like it and when he didn't feel like it. He will have got up on the morning some days and he said, I can't be arsed going to the gym. I can't be bothered going for a run. Or he'd have looked at his lunch sometimes and seen a load of rabbit food and just thought, I really fancy a burger. But he did it anyway. By the way, the video of mine that got featured on CBC Radio was one of those videos where I couldn't be asked, but I did it anyway. It's funny how life works out sometimes, isn't it? And I didn't think it was my best performance on that day, but someone did. And you never know when your opportunity might come along. I mean, I know that social media and tech and everything is a fast-paced industry, but don't let anybody else, I won't swear, uh, rob you or lie to you and say, oh, you know, you can write one blog post and you'll get a thousand Twitter followers or you're going to make loads of money. Like, it doesn't work like that. Although it's a fast-paced industry, nothing will be substituted for hard work, dedication, and most of all, this is where most people fall down, consistency. What happened to consistency? We all live in this kind of instant gratification sort of society where it's a microwave thing. Ping, you know, 15 seconds and I'll get my 150,000 pounds worth of lease. It doesn't work like that. My journey in digital marketing started January 2010. Okay, January 2010. I got featured on CBC almost to the day, January 2014, this year. That's four years. Well, are you saying it's going to take me four years? I can't wait that long. No, 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 you're asking the wrong questions. It's not about how long is it going to take me. It's how much do you really care about your business? That's harsh. How much do you actually care? How much are you willing to do? How much importance do you place on that? I was with a, a client, excuse me, just on Monday, and I was doing a presentation to the whole company. I'd already worked with the two directors They'd gone through the marketing process that we have, and they said, can you come in and talk to the rest of our staff? When I spoke to the staff, they were all saying the same things. We haven't got time to do that. We haven't got time for that. And the director, I was so pleased, he just said, we're going to make time for it because it's important, because there's value in that thing. It's just as important as doing this and doing that and doing that. I hope it hasn't been too harsh, guys, but uh, this is the reality of the situation. I, I don't want to say... You know, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. And uh, I'm pretty sure we've all heard social media hippies or whatever and <laughs> saying that you can do it really quickly and it's just not like that. So that's the approach that we have. But if you're consistent, if you do that thing about solving your customers' problems and needs, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Oh, God, we've gone over time. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much to everybody who's uh, uh, come along. If you want to talk to me, I'll be here for the next you know, 10 minutes or so. But uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you.